Hello, I'm Tim Durb with Durb's Bee Farm, and on YouTube, I'm Walls Bee Man. Uh, this video, I want to, uh, well, probably devoted to several things, but uh, you getting good and correct information. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, don't anybody send a donation. I don't need it. Uh, now, my, my, my wife might tell you a different story, but anyway, that's, that's a chasing a rabbit down another trail. Uh, now, I'm going to turn my back on the camera, so y'all forgive that, and, and so I can talk about what I'm going to talk about. Now, uh, why do you move the camera a little bit closer if you need to? And my grandson's doing the rec uh, watching the camera. And uh, now, uh, viewers, here's my video, and right underneath the video is, uh, uh, if you want to share this video with somebody, there's a share button, and uh, there's, right underneath in the middle is up, uh, I like, and then there's a, I don't like, and click that I like, it thumbs up, and if you don't like it, uh, just turn your computer off, and uh, and then uh, underneath underneath the video, about I don't know uh, seven or eight inches is a, add a public comment, and what it's going to tell you here is beekeepers, all of y'all feel free to go down there and comment on some if somebody sends a question in. You are more than welcome to comment and answer their question. And if you disagree with me, that's fine too. We're here just to help beekeepers. We, we're not in competition. So, uh, uh, but feel free to uh, come down here and leave, leave your comment. Let me know what where you're from. And that's important. This one guy made a video and he said he's from North Carolina. And... In North Carolina, there's there's three weather climates. There's the mountain, the Piedmont, and the coast. And our last name is Durham, and we lived in Durham, North Carolina, uh, about five and a half years back in the 70s. And so now I'm going to go... Uh, uh, this uh, Russian, uh, he has a Russian accent, He's really neat, and I think I like to hear him talk, and I think everybody does, and that's why he has a lot of viewers. But he jumped into bees too fast, and he's smart. He's a smart guy now, but uh, and he jumped into bees, and he's thinking that feeding the bees with syrup on top of the hive that that, that killed his bees, and and I don't think so. So I answered. A lot of things in his video, and I'm gonna go over these. And so, uh, uh, number one, I think he put his mouse guards on the entrance uh, too late in the season, and mice got in there. I don't know, but that's what I think. Now I've got a video. I've got a, I've got almost 200 videos, and uh, one video the, the the best mouse guard is applied to the front of the entrance not don't jam it in the entrance and I've got a video on that and that is the absolute best and and as soon as it starts to turn cool or it cools off a little bit in the summertime go ahead and put your mouse guard on don't wait till it gets too cold now uh, uh, the man he uh, uh, he said that uh, uh, he thought his empty combs caused condensation, and that, that's not the case. You must have ventilation at the top. You just It's almost impossible to have too much ventilation at the top so that moist air can get out of the hive. I don't think he had any ventilation. He didn't speak about ventilation. Uh, now, uh, number three... Uh, I told him to, to, he said this was his second year, and his hives look all brand new and everything. He got some money involved in it. 
and but he jumped into it too too many hives too quick. Start out with two hives, and if you make a mistake, then you kind of learn the next year get two more. I think he started out with eight or ten, and uh, so uh, 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 it is rare that anybody needs to feed their hive in the winter time. It's rare. Pick your hive up during the year. Pick, uh, and if you don't want to pick the whole hive up, in the back of it, just pick up the rear, rear of the hive and get you a baseline, what is heavy and what is not. And so, usually, uh, this beekeeper was feeding his hives in the dead of winter. And I'm thinking he's in the mountains of North Carolina because he had ice in those hives. And uh, we're real close to Memphis, so that'll give you a, 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 a what's the uh, up and down latitude. We're close to Memphis, so that'll give you a, a latitude of where we are. And uh, but. Uh, if you feed your hive, most likely it will be right before they're going into springtime. And that's when they are most likely will starve. Because by then they've got a lot of bees in there and there's not a lot of nectar coming in. So that's when you have to really watch them. Uh, now, uh, uh, let me... Uh, uh, Granulated. Now, you can pour granulated if 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 it's cold winter anytime. If you think they're they're gonna starve, they don't have any honey in there. You can literally pour granulated sugar down on the bees, and uh, and that will keep them from starving. And then you can also uh, top feed them with uh, 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 a bottle of sugar syrup and. In the spring, late late winter, early spring, if you had to do that, you would want to make it thick, thick sugar syrup. And uh, do not let the bottle get down low. If you let the bottle get down low, then it will lose its vacuum and then drip and run out on the bees, and that will hurt them. Excuse me. So... Uh, I am absolutely convinced that this top feeding with a mason jar is absolutely the best and uh, uh, it's least costly. It's absolutely wonderful. So, uh, uh, but I'm thinking his got low and the sugar syrup ran down on the bees, but <coughs> I don't think that's what killed his hives. Uh, uh, it might have killed the bees that were left in the hive, but it didn't kill the colony. Now, uh, uh, he talked about plastic plastic beehives. Uh, I like the plastic top. The inner cover is okay. The inner cover will warp, but that's not all bad. When the inner cover and when the inner cover warps, that lets ventilation get in there. So, uh, the, uh, uh, do not buy any plastic frames. Please don't. And he made a comment that uh, uh, plastic will keep your hive uh, uh, cooler in the summertime, warmer in the wintertime. And man, somebody trying to sell plastic beehives told him that. that that's... Uh, wood is hard to beat, I'll tell you. And uh, uh, also, now he wrapped his hives in some kind of insulation, and they they were silver looking. Well, uh, in our uh, uh, latitude here, uh, you don't want to wrap your hives. Uh, in his case, I think the silver reflected the heat and they actually hurt the bees because that silver reflected the heat when they needed the heat but he shouldn't have wrapped them anyway unless he was in the top in the high mountains of North Carolina but then it shouldn't have been 
silver. Okay, uh, number six. Now, this is kind of hard to, I kind of hesitate to say this because I don't want to sound like I know it all. But do not believe everything you hear and get two options, get two opinions. Uh, find somebody that, that you trust will strive to give you the truth. If I say something wrong, I want somebody caught my attention and I'll, I'll admit it on a tape. And it's not because I want to be right. I want to give you correct information. Uh, 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 number seven, is it natural for your box to be... Okay, uh, in the springtime, late winter and spring, it's, it's natural for the bottom brood chamber. If you're running two deep brood chambers, it's natural for the bottom box to be almost empty and the top box to be heavy. So... And then, of course, come spring, then you, you'll rotate that. You'll, you'll rotate them. And uh, number eight, uh, uh, I think the disappearing disease is what really killed his bees. Uh, uh, but if you have a, a, a feeder, if you use that uh, mason jar feeder in the front entrance of your hive, which that's not the best, but... Uh, you sure don't want it to get low because when the sun comes up and that sun hits that bottle, it will it will cause that jar to lose, lose its vacuum, and and the syrup will run out. Then now you got robbing started. Uh, 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 so now down below the down below the uh, uh, down below my uh, uh, video is uh, uh, add a public comment. Please, please feel free and let us know where you're from. That's important. I, I like that. Australia, Germany, they're just a lot of places. That's fun to see where people are. are it, it's getting to be a small world. And uh, uh, so be sure and click on that, on you like it. And then and then also there's a, you can subscribe. I'll get a, if you subscribe to my video, I'll get a blue ribbon. And an old man like me needs needs some blue ribbons. Trust me. All right, y'all have a good day, and and let me know what you think and what you'd like for me to make a video in. Take care and have a good one. I was on a plane the other day, and I don't fly too often, but uh, uh, anyhow, uh, this guy, you know, I was flying in third class or fourth class, whatever you call it. And this guy sitting beside me, he he was kind of he was kind of persnickety, you know, and kind of I don't know. He acted a little different. That's the only way I know to put it. But uh, he gets up and and I watched him. I thought maybe he was going up there to get him a cocktail or something. But he went on up there and he sat in the first class section. And you know I could lean over there and see where he was going. I mean, you're on a plane, you don't have anything else to do, you know, be nosy. And uh, so, uh, a wait, uh, not a waitress, but a, a, the stewardess, uh, I saw she leaned over there, and I found out later. She said, sir, said, uh, um, you can't uh, sit up here in first class. Said, you have to go back to your original seat. And uh, he said, uh, I'm going to New York City, and I'm not moving. I'm sitting right here. Well, the head uh, uh, stewardess, she eased up there, and uh, uh, she's kind of attractive, you know. Uh, what I mean? And she leaned over there, and I could tell she was talking real nice to him. She said, sir, said, uh, you can't sit up here because uh, you, you you got to go back to your original seat. And uh, he said kind of loud like, well, I'm going to New York City and I'm not moving. And uh, so I'm steady watching. And so one of those stirred just uh, went up there and knocked on the cabin door, the pilot's door. They keep it locked, you know. And... Uh, she told the, she told the, uh, excuse that, uh, 
she told the pilot what the situation was. He said, well, said, I've, I've dealt with all kinds of folks and, and I can handle this. So uh, he put it on automatic pilot. I hope he did. And he went back there and, and uh, he was nice too. And he said, uh, sir said, uh, he, he uh, whis whis whispered it real low. He said, uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, third class is going to New York City and first class is not. And so the gentleman, he, he got up, walked back there and sat beside me. And he told me all what went on, you know. And uh, I didn't, I didn't let on, but I knew after he told me that whole story, I, I knew, uh, you know, he wasn't right. So that, that's how that happened. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know where that man ended up. <laughs> all right, y'all take care.